Ofcol and the DFE have been releasing large, large volumes of documents, large volumes of very long documents, which I sit around and read. Um, the one that was released on Friday 22nd was pithily titled Consultation on Additional GCSE AS A Level Exam Series in Autumn 2020, Proposal for an Additional Exam Series in Autumn 2020, Irresponsible Coronavirus Pandemic. Just rolls off the tongue there. So this is Ofqual asking you what you think should happen. Because when exams were cancelled, the Secretary of State for Education, I think that's the right title, basically told Ofqual that they should prepare for students to sit an exam as soon as it was reasonably possible after exams opened. And we all assume this would be kind of like an autumn exam series in September. But things are changing lots at the moment. Initially, um, exam results were going to come out early July and now they're coming out on the same day that they were always going to come out. So just because the Secretary of State for Education says something, that doesn't mean it's actually going to happen when reality sets in because when schools were shut, when exams were cancelled, that was the first anyone heard of it. It's not as if Ofqual got well I'm assuming they didn't, um, like months and months worth of preparation for this and it may seem like it's taken quite a long time for this consultation to come out and they've got quite a short period for this consultation um, but it's not as if they have plans for this. So um, there were lots of questions in here. This document does say that it is aimed at students not solely aimed at students but students who either aren't going to get a calculated grade um but they're expecting to sit an exam and get a grade so these are generally going to be private candidates or students who are expecting to be disappointed with the grade that they get um given so disappointed with our calculated grades and it takes you through the options and this is quite a lengthy document um, and if you are going to respond to the consultation I do suggest you go and actually look at the document and not just click through and respond to the questions um, because it does weigh up the pros and cons of each scenario. So for example, um, if Ofcall forced all of the exam boards to provide all of the um, exams that were going to be sat in the autumn um, they would be expensive so who would pay for that so it's not just as simple as we have to replicate the may june exam period in september october um there are lots of things to take into account here um because if it is if the exam boards are going to incur this extra cost um who is going to pay for it where are exams going to be sat um, because if you're in year 13 or even in year 11 and you've left your school or college, where are you going to sit these exams? Um, there is a lot of disruption to sitting exams. I'm sure you remember when you were in year 10 or year 12 and the halls, you know, had to be cleared out for people to sit the exams. If they have all of year 11, they have left till now year 12s back in to sit exams, there's going to be disruption to the whole school of, um, you know, closing the gym, um, silent corridors, all those sorts of things, and then, well, they, year 11s are now in year 12, they need to be doing their year 12 work, or year 13 is going to be at university. So, there were lots and lots of things to take into account here. It shouldn't just be a knee jerk reaction of we need to be able to sit the exams. Um, so, this is quite a lengthy document. It does take a lot of things into account, like the cost. And it does also say that, um, you know, the exam boards are not actually required to um, provide exams in September. There's no, there's no basis in law for this. Um, it talks about the, the November resets for maths and um, English, which have always been in place. Um, you always get the chance to resit then. But there is kind of like legally very narrow time frame when um, exams can be sat and exam boards are under no legal requirement to provide exams every single year for that. So... There were lots and lots of questions and points in here. So I'm going to go through each of the questions and this is the bit that you'll get to respond to online. Question, to what extent do you agree or disagree that we should require examples to offer exams for all of the GCSE, AS and A-level qualifications this autumn that they intended to offer over the summer? Question, to what extent do you agree or disagree that an exam board should receive no entries for a qualification 
by its entry deadline can withdraw the exams for that qualification from the exam timetable. So this isn't really talking about GCSE Maths or GCSE English because they always have to provide November autumn exams for this and there were likely to be a high number of entries for this. It's the smaller subjects they are talking about like GCSE Japanese or GCSE Latin which might have only had less than a thousand entries anyway and of those thousand entries how many are actually going to want to resit because Latin isn't an essential subject so there are lots and lots of things to take into account here because if they require um, the exam boards to provide exams in astronomy, GCSE, geology which are fascinating subjects and nobody takes them that that's that's a waste of time and money. The next set of questions about the format of the exams. Question, to what extent do you agree or disagree that for the autumn series the same number of exams should be taken by students as they would have been taken if the summer exams had not been cancelled? Question, to what extent do you agree or disagree that the exams taken in the autumn series should be the same for each qualification as those normally taken in the summer series? So for GCSE Science there are six exam papers. Now if you want to resit GCSE combined science, six exam papers, that's a lot of papers that you have to take time out to resit, that you have to take time out to do, that the school or wherever you're going to sit those has to provide space for, that you have to revise for. So the question is, if you wanted to resit GCSE science, would it be all six papers? Would it be a limited number of paper? Would it be one paper? Um, would it still be kind of like, you know, for the, the non-exam assessment parts, would that still count? If they did change the style of the paper, if they maybe said, look, for GCSE, math, instead of the three papers that you'd normally see, it, which are like an hour and a half, two hours long, six hours exams, what if we just sat one two-hour exam? Now that may sound lovely just sitting in one two hour exam, but the questions are going to be in a different style, it's going to be a different format, it might not be the sort of thing that um, that you're prepared for, You know, the, the change in exam technique, the different sorts of questions. For, you know, for science, if you have biology comes from physics all on one paper, that would be a massive, massive paper. How long would that paper be? Um, what original materials would be provided for that new style of paper. Um, these things have to be weighed up between sitting six hour and a half exams for science or sitting one two hour exam that is a combination of all of them. Um, there is no right simple answer to this. Lots and lots of subjects still have sections that are non-exam assessments. For A-levels we have the practical, um, for A-level sciences we have the practical qualification. There's um, like drama and PE and the next set of questions is all about those. To what extent do you agree or disagree that with the exception of art and design grades for GCSE, AS and A-level awarded in autumn should be based only on students' performance in their exams with no non-exam assessment. To what extent do you agree or disagree that G grades for GCSE, AS and A-level art and design awarded in the autumn should be based on new tasks completed under supervised conditions? To what extent do you agree or disagree that any new task for GCSEs, AS and A-level art and design should be set and marked by the exam boards? So they're treating art and design and all the other non-assessment assessment differently because for art your exam is sitting in control conditions painting um, and that is much harder to, to to recreate than just giving someone a maths paper and telling them to sit down and get on with it. There is there is a massive massive time undertaking there um, so should that sort of thing be sat again or not? Now for A-level biology, chemistry and physics and in English language there are extra bits as well. 
So for A-levels, there's a practical endorsement where we say, yes, you can do practicals, well, good. And then for English, there's the speaking where you get pass and merit. So let's click questions about those. To what extent do you agree or disagree that exam board should carry forward the outcome of the practical assessment for students who take exams in A-level biology, chemistry, physics and or geology in the autumn? To what extent do you agree or disagree that exam boards should carry forward the outcome of the GCSE English Language Spoken Language Assessment for students who take the exams for the qualification in autumn as in any other year? For the non-exam assessment, some students will have completed it all already and will have had all of it assessed and marked and moderated but for some bits of the coursework some students might only be have been 50% of the way through when school starts or 90% of the way through when school starts and they hadn't actually been able to put the cherry on top to make it sparkle and those students are going to think that this whole situation is particularly unfair. The next set is about the timing of the autumn exams because when this initially happened we were told they were September exams and then it changed to autumn exams and we don't necessarily know whether schools are going to be open in September. I mean, desperately hoping they are, but if um, schools are not open in September, having the requirement forcing the exam boards to say this is the exam dates is going to be hard because schools aren't open. Um, we are anxiously looking at other countries who have reopened schools, who have started to reduce the lockdown restrictions to see if there was going to be a second peak, a second wave. If that second wave, that second peak exists, if it happens, if it hits in the autumn, if it hits in October, September, November, when this second set of exams is planned for, what do we do? Do we go ahead with the second set of exams or do we cancel a second set of exams? So the timing of these is important. To what extent do you agree or disagree that we should put in place provisions that allow the exam world to offer exams from October 2020 within the exact start and finish dates being confirmed by us when the position on reopening of schools and colleges is clearer? To what extent do you agree or disagree that we should build some flexibility into our regulatory framework to ensure us to vary the start and finish the exam days if it is necessary because of the public health situation? So the exam boards are saying that if you sat A-levels in October, the results will be out Christmas time. And if GCSEs were sat in November, then the results would be out February time. Now, I know this is not what you wanted because if you were relying on that GCSE result to get onto a certain set of A levels the message that we're getting from Ofcom, Ofcom the message that we're getting from the exam boards at the moment is that they will not be ready in time for that. If you are relying on improving your A level results to get into your university of choice it is not going to be ready in time for that so if that's what you were counting on or if that's what you were planning on counting on then I'm really sorry that is not happening. The document further goes on to say that if you were, if you've received your calculated grade, then the centre that gave you that grade is going to be responsible for allowing you to sit that exam. Now, this is going to cause a whole range of problems for schools, and I don't know how to solve that. The next bit gets a bit messy because the exam boards have said that if you get your calculated result in the summer and then you resit in the autumn and you get another result, both results will stand. You will have both set results. So one will not override the other. Now this is different to normal um, resits where the, the later grade overrides. Um, you will have both results. Now this is gonna be messy when we get to things like um, proving in the future what exam grades you got because you have to hand over your certificates, you have to show people your certificates and some of those certificates, if you have two grades on them or two certificates with two different grades, it's going to look a bit odd. It's going to cause confusion in the future. So that's what the next set of questions is about the certificates. To what extent do you agree or disagree that we should amend our rules to allow examples to issue a replacement certificate to a student to show either their calculated grade or their grade from the autumn exam series but not to require them to do so? 
other options they came up with were individual certificates for individual things but at that point it's just starting to get really messy. For appealing your calculated grade there's very limited appeals you can do because there is no paper to remark. The only appeal process that I've seen so far is where you're going to be assuming that somebody made a mistake putting the numbers in to the uh, website and it is teachers typing letters and numbers into websites and a fancy upload um but for the autumn exam series there is going to be appeal because it is going to be an exam to what extent do you agree or disagree that the normal review of moderation marking and appeal arrangement should apply to the autumn exam series there is lots and lots in this document for you to read think about and then the questions for you to go and answer respond to the consultation online this is something that affects you directly so i would suggest that you do it i would suggest that you think carefully about it and don't just rush um because the what happens here is going to have wide ranging consequences for um finances of exam boards and schools for practicalities of schools and exam boards for um the lower years who are going to be seeing it and then in the future um if you're relying on this changing grade to to get you on to the next level it doesn't look like that is going to happen so it, it is unprecedented, God, I hate saying that. It is unprecedented times and there is lots and lots for you to think about here, guys. Um, if you have any questions, I would do my very best to help you. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.